And today, Brian and I would like to discover EU 2014 Gushu. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. If you're new here in our channel and you're also looking to expand your tea knowledge and brewing skills, then make sure to click on the subscribe button. And if you enjoy watching, don't forget us to give us a thumbs up. All right, so let's get started with the EU 2014 Kushu Brian. You know already Brian, so I don't do a lot of introduction. Brian, every time there is poor, there is also Brian here at Anoshan somehow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, we've already together drunk uh, the Nanoshan Gushu, yep. so which is not only Nanoshan shop, but is a Gushu from the Nano Mountain. Uh, last time we had uh, the Bingdao Gushu, yes. Yes. and today we have EU Gushu. And we have selected this one really just to complement the other two. So I thought it is really a good opportunity to taste it with Brian because you had also other two teas, so we can make a comparison. Let's have a look at the uh, Bincha to start with. So I have it here. Uh, this is a, um, a brand new um, Bincha. And uh, let's see how I do it. Here we go. So I said it is from 2014, but it was uh, stored in EU until uh, the spring of 2019, okay. when Great. we sent it to uh, Berlin, actually, yeah. Okay. So here you have uh, the Bing Chan. So, what can you tell about that? What do I think? Um, well, it's not really bud heavy, um, mm -hmm. it's fairly balanced. Uh, and by the buds, I mean these lighter leaves here, you can kind of see that they're less of them than maybe like the Bing Dao we tried. Yeah, a little bit less, yeah. Um, it also was harvested a little bit later in the spring, so it might be the uh, reason why. That's why, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks a little bit more aged, but mm -hmm. it might just be an illusion because there are less buds. It's also, they it's have been stored in two different places. One that's was true, in Shanghai, true. the other one is right, in right. EU, so... Well, let's see how does the, the taste uh, is. I have actually another uh, bingcha here. It's actually exactly the same, but I bought one also for myself. And since this is already started, I thought it's better right, if we yeah. keep on using instead of starting a new one. Um, and we kind of see the compression here too, because you've already broken yeah, it. Yeah, I already broken it, yeah. So I would say like medium to light compression, which is good. Yeah. And it'll age yeah. a little bit faster. Um, with a lighter compression as well. Definitely, you get more air in between. Yeah. Usually it tends to break uh, cake, especially good cakes like uh, Gushu or fancy places. I tends to uh, break them as soon as I get them. I put them in a jar just for aging. Not all of them, mm -hmm. but just uh, so that they get even more air. Yeah. Just just the whole, uh, the whole reason about that. Um, is, the hot, is the water already hot? It is... Pretty hot. Okay. It's 90. Well, it cannot get really hot here because we are at a certain altitude, but we do whatever nature allows <laughs> us uh, doing. So probably get about 95C. Yeah, I think. 93, I think, is the maximum you can get. Maybe 94. I think in Fahrenheit, so it's hard for me to remember what the C yeah, is. Yeah, what is 203? 203 is the highest. 203 is the highest. Yeah. <laughs> is that enough? Yeah. Sorry, it's a bit loud because uh, the garage just behind us is opening. We'll be closing soon. All right, what do you think? Is enough? Yes. That was okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. First so, um, yeah, uh, while Brian is tipping this, I will tell you a little bit more about the tea. So, as we say that this is a tea from EU. EU is in the Sichuan Banna Prefecture in uh, Yunnan. It was harvested in the spring 2014. And as for the plant, it is uh, a shampoo from Gushu plant, so from ancient tea trees. And um, EU, EU is in Sichuan Banna, and also Nanoshan is in Sichuan Banna, but they are in two different parts of Sichuan Banna. There is a very large river that cross the province, uh, actually the, the, the county Sichuan Banna, 
uh, no, the, the prefecture, I'm mixing a little bit, things is the prefecture, and split the Sison Banna into two halves. So you have the west and the eastern part. The eastern part, now it's closing the garage, sorry about that. <laughs> the eastern part is where um, EU is, and the western part is where uh, Nanoshan is. So Nanoshan belongs more to the Menghai area. Okay. And these two areas have a different soil. One is more alkaline, the other one is more acidic. And as a result, I think also because of that, we have a different taste. So, um, what does it mean that? We will find it out soon. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be affected by the terroir for sure. Um, yeah. And not just the soil, but uh, the sides of the mountain, you know, um, when it's facing the sun, north, south, that kind of thing. Um, much less, you know, Definitely. the trees themselves, the farmer, and so on. Mm. So many factors that go into it. I, I always like the first brew. Yeah, in yeah. Brewer. It brings this lightness and sweetness, mm -hmm. then, then uh, uh, disappear a little bit in the follow-ups, mm -hmm. yeah, when you get more strength out of it. This was very, actually a really good steep, too. Very good, yeah. Right on. You, you, you just hit the right time there. Mm. As a matter of fact, because of maybe this terroir difference between the two sides, there is the tendency to say that the tea from EU is a bit softer, so mm -hmm. it doesn't have that very strong tea energy, chachi, as from the western part of yeah. uh, Sisombana. Um, so the opposite would be Bulang. Bulang, like uh, famous names like Laobanjan, but Laobanjan actually is in Bulang. So, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, it's uh, just Laobanjan is just uh, a Jan, a town, mm -hmm. but uh, it is in the Mulang mountain okay. area. And it's very close to Menghai. All these areas are usually relatively strong, bitter, and, um, and pungent. And here we have a little bit of a softer tea. Yeah, but let's try to do more steepings and see what we get out of it. Yeah, and I think, you know, strong and soft are kind of broad brush strokes when you're describing tea. Yeah. But in terms of Bulong Yiwu, if you have them side by side, you really be able to tell the difference. There's a big, a yeah. very strong difference. And it doesn't mean one is, you know, better or worse than the other. It just means kind of um, the general, again, broad brush strokes of what you might be looking for that particular day. So with a Bulong, you know, if you're really into bitter and strong flavors that might be something you're going for yeah. if you're just starting out in poor and that might be too bold for you too much definitely too yeah so um, for this. we had actually a bull from 2011 on the shop that is sold out we have one more cake is also a gusher actually that is stored in switzerland as as soon as i have the time to go back in switzerland and bring it back to berlin it will be back online and okay. that's very strong, <laughs> very powerful, even for people that are used to tea like us. Mm -hmm. While EU is much softer. So for me, it is a better tea for those that are really starting with poor, that want to find out uh, how does uh, poor taste. Or maybe, yeah. you know, some of you have heard that the tea freaks are very much into poor, but every time you try to taste one, you find it too strong, too bitter. You don't understand what people really like of it. And then EU is a good start. Yeah. I'm not saying that is a tea only for beginners, actually. I would say we are not beginners mm -hmm. and I am enjoying this tea, but uh, it is also a tea for beginners. Let's put it that way, where Bulan is not. Yeah, and I, I think Yiwu, when I think of Yiwu, I think it was kind of a classic Shampuar. If you really want just a really good quality Shampuar, yeah. Yiwu is one of the places you're going to be buying it from. Yeah. I don't, you know, honestly, I think I have, I think I have one Bulan cake and I don't drink a ton of it. Um, just because it's, it's so intense. Um, mm. so, and Brian is a, and I is love a poor guy that <laughs> likes bitterness, right? Yeah, yeah, so that's saying something. And you can see it's not that uh, EU doesn't have strength. Like in this one, I mean, it has a softness, but especially now with the further steeping, it develops also a certain strength. If you want, it's soft with uh, some strength. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, the chachi here is just different. It's, it's more... It's more subtle, maybe, mm -hmm. but there is a powerfulness in it. If yeah, I yeah. Say that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. How to describe the team? Well, I was just thinking about this, and I've, this is kind of funny because I think I've said chocolate in the other two videos I've been in. But when I think about this, I'm not not tasting chocolate, but think about Bulong versus a Yiwu, right? Sometimes you want a really fine Swiss milk chocolate, and that would be the Yi Wu. Yeah. Uh, very good, just a great drinking tea. Sometimes you want something like a 90% cacao 
95 percent cacao that's and then you take the bull that's yeah. the bull yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 that's the thing that you may not want to drink all the time because it's a little too intense yeah just for everything this is is neither fruity nor floral it has a kind of neutral taste mm -hmm. to me yeah. yeah it's more uh maybe smooth. umami like and smooth mm -hmm. yeah let's see with that tea because i see that the color there is quite intense yeah and what do you what do you think about the taste let me taste this one and let me mm. Mm. ah so this one actually just yeah this is the steep really hit so this is um the third one the flavor is really starting to come out and i mm. think for this one i'm tasting um peanuts mm. um almost like so you has a natural sweetness to it and it's kind of playing with the, the saltiness of the peanuts and it tastes to me like Amer American dish called peanut brittle, which mm -hmm. is just caramelized sugar with peanuts in it. <laughs> so, yeah, so I think the point here is that about the savoriness and in particular the saltiness. This yeah. tea in your mouth, especially in the aftertaste, like right now, I feel very salty. Mm -hmm. It's like having taken a little bit of salt and put it in my mouth. So if you don't know how a salty tea tastes, that's the one, the one to go. But it's not only salty. So the example with uh, the, how do you call peanut, peanut brittle. brittle? The peanut brittle that is caramelized sugar with kind of salty, savory peanut mm -hmm. is a good comparison because here you have an interplay of saltiness and bitter and, uh, and sweetness, actually. Yeah. yeah. And you even get like the, um, I don't know, if, you know, depends how many peanuts you eat, but the peanuts in the uh, skins of peanuts, they have almost like a minerally kind of, I mean, them. American are very expert. Peanuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are peanuts Excellent. everywhere. Here. <laughs> peanut butter, peanut, uh, how you call it? Brittle. Brittle. Yeah, yeah. Um, Shall I put it down? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So this is going to be a really long steam. Um, but you get a lot of flavor out of it. Yeah. That's what I'm going to pour out really quick just so I can. Mm. And is a, is a tea that lasts very long. So mm -hmm. you can definitely do about uh, 10 steeping. We might have five grams of leaves, and this is a relatively large teapot. Yeah, that really wasn't much leaf. And there's a ton of flavor coming out of this. And I think this is the fourth steep. Yeah. I think I lost track. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we could at least easily get five more steeps, maybe mm -hmm. more than that for sure. And uh, uh, I have known this tea also in the guy one, and I can tell you that the ishing, at least this one, but in general, ishing will have that effect. Remove even more of the bitterness that is not there mm -hmm. and bring a bit more minerality. So, I find it really a good match in Ishing, and actually that's the reason why we choose the Ishing this time and not the Gai one, because it enhances exactly those properties of this tea, mm -hmm. the minerality, and the fact that it's not a bitter tea. <laughs> Extremely salty, it's, uh, it's incredible. I'm very curious to, um, what, what do you think about the aging? How will this age? I mean, it is already six years old, but let's say another 10 years. What do you expect from this? Yeah, and it's really hard to tell with aging. Um, unless what, you're, what would you like <laughs> to expect from it? What would you like to expect? So what, I, what I, I would hope, and I think it probably will happen, is the saltiness will linger, and it probably will get a little less, but you know, roughly the same level of saltiness, but there'll be more depth of flavor. Mm -hmm. um, it'll become sweeter over time, more yep. mellow. Um, and I think that's gonna be perfect. Yeah. So if for this, I would buy, and not just advertising, but seriously, I would buy two cakes, one for drinking and one for aging. Because right now, I actually really like it the way it is right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's only good if you age. I'm saying that it's going to be a completely different flavor. It'll just be fa fascinating to yeah, keep this to for see how it evolves, 10 to 15 yeah. years and just drink it slowly over time. Mm -hmm. It'll be really, really good. Yeah, my hope would be that really it become even rounder and smoother. It's already mm -hmm. smooth tea, but it has some strength. And I hope that... Uh, this strength make it even smoother, but I really hope that the saltiness remains there because it would make like a broth that is smooth and salty at the same yeah, yeah. time, yeah. And uh, um, one last thing I want to tell you about uh, EU tea. I mean, it's just a say in, uh, uh, in China. People keep on saying that actually EU is a good tea for women. Um, now, why they say that? I don't know if it's true or not that what they say, but you know that in China, people associate the taste of the tea, the, of the type of tea, with the physiology of the person. So if you are a cool person, according to traditional Chinese medicine, you are more keen to like warming tea mm -hmm. and the other way around. And now women are generally colder person than men. I mean, not emotionally, I'm speaking <laughs> yeah. about traditional Chinese medicine. And that's why a tea like EU, the tea doesn't have that aggressive bitterness 
and pungent notes is even a young ew is a little bit milder and warmer okay and so might be a better match also for uh women yeah i said it's not really my opinion and i don't know that i'm not a woman but i just report to you what i've heard uh, in china yeah so how did you get this tea this What's tea the story, uh, the story about the tea this tea we got it directed by the farmer actually we were uh last uh, uh we bought it together with nanoshan 2019. So oh, the story okay. about it is the following. We visited a friend of mine and uh, uh, through her, we have ordered from the farmer uh, Mao Cha, unpressed uh, leaves from, uh, from 2019. They were just uh, um, produced a few days back and oh. sent over from Yunnan to Shanghai. Okay. So we tasted both and everyone, we were during the tea tour, we had other 14 customers with us and everyone liked them. In fact, a few of uh, us ordered those tea. I would right say away. half of the people right yeah. away. <laughs> but it was loose leaves and we have only samples. So we ordered pressed tea mm -hmm. from Yunnan. Then we went on our tea tour for 10 days. And by the time we came back in, Yunnan, in, in Shanghai, the tea was there and pressed. Oh, wow. But uh, the EU took longer to dry mm -hmm. in uh, Shishwambana and they were not able to send it over. So instead of that, for the same price, which is good, they sent over uh, a few cakes of the 2014. And that's why we have the 2019 Nanoshan mm -hmm. and the 2014 EU yeah, that we can offer, honestly, for a fairly good price for being a six years old Gushu from EU. Yeah, yeah. yeah? So it's, it's not much on stock, actually. And, uh, and I mean one cake i just removed it because i took it from myself <laughs> but uh but it is there and that's the story about the tea yeah. are they pressed in a factory or is it a farmer press this is uh uh this uh, actually i don't know where they press it yeah, oh, okay. but i know that is a farmer tea yeah mm -hmm. and that's why it has also a little bit it's not that that pure as other yeah. tea that we had together because i mean it's a farmer process and you know in eu there has been an effort about 10 years ago to standardize and having a more clean production mm -hmm. so from the government they have these new uh, laws that they have to separate their household with uh, the production of tea sure but that um, was implemented only partially and so even nowadays some farmers are not uh, as precise in the production and as repetitive let's say in following always the same methodologies as in a factory and uh, uh, i mean mao cha is generally done anyway by farmers but there are farmers that are more uh, pay more attention to that and other not and you i believe some of the farmers there are a little bit more down to her they just pick their leaves and mm -hmm. process them very quickly and so you might even have here some smoky notes actually from the processing because maybe the area where they've done uh, they killed the green mm -hmm. was not enough ventilated anyway i mean i hope uh, we could render to you the taste of this tea yeah, or you have a question? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I was just thinking about if I, I, I was trying, I was tasting and thinking about whether it was the processing or the leaves I'm tasting, you know, it's really hard mm -hmm. to discern. Yeah, um, or the aging. Or the aging, you know, um, but it is really nice tea, um, and I do think it'll age really well. Um, definitely the, I guess, the multidimensional saltiness, the sweetness, um, and it's actually, as we're sipping it here, it's changing a little bit more. It's gaining more minerally definitely. aspect to it, uh, so... <laughs> And this is the fifth steep, uh, so I think in six, Four. seven, eight, nine. Oh, this is the well. This is the fifth steep. I guess actually that's ah, the third. yeah, yeah. Um, as it progresses, it's just gonna you know change and get more interesting. Um, maybe we can report back and, and and tell the other flavors we get as we go on. But yeah, then when it ages too, those flavors will come out and become more bold. So uh, just a really exciting tea, and kind of rare too because you don't get the uh, the saltiness is kind of a rare thing to find in Shang Tuar. So it's not. Uh, you know, it's sought after, but it's not that common. I was noticing here on these leaves that I just broke in my hand that you can see some traces of um, the oxidation that might come because they've been withering for a little bit too long in production or maybe because uh, of the aging. I will try to show you it on the camera. I'm not so sure that you can really spot it, but on the side, it is a little bit darker and that's because of the oxidation. Yeah, and in the center is a bit greener. And the leaves are very soft indeed. Anyway, I hope we could render actually to you the taste of this tea. This soft tea is not very heavily bitter. Still, it has some strength. And the interplay between sweetness and saltiness, that is actually the most interesting part. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this said. And if this is the case, don't forget to give us 
a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe our channel if that's the first time you're watching our video. I will see you at the next video and Brian will see you at the next poor video. Bye-bye.